Hey everybody and welcome to episode 9 of Creator for the Creator. I'm titling this episode Confessions of a Former Pro-Choicer because today we're going to be talking about all things abortion, abortion rights, um, and me now being on the side of pro-life, I'm going to be talking about why I changed from pro-choice to pro-life. So to begin with, I'd like to start out by reading from the book of Psalms. This is chapter 94, verse 21. And it says, They band themselves together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. So for me, I used to, I used to think about pro-choice in different ways and I always found myself leaning towards um, the side of the mother I never leaned towards the side of the unborn and there was a lot of reasons for me choosing to side with the woman instead of the unborn but I realized now that it was actually me just siding with myself and leaning on my own understanding but since I was saved, I've learned to see it from God's perspective. I've learned to lean not on my own understanding. And I've um, come to a better understanding of why God hates abortion so much. And, you know, the devil really uses a lot of lies. That's his tool is lies. And his playground is our mind and our hearts. And all of these pro-choice, pro-abortion activists, all of their um, reasons for abortion are all lies. And they're all lies based on false justice and based on selfishness. And it's just, it's really wrong. It's, they've completely flipped upside down what is good and what is evil. And so the Bible says in Isaiah 5.20, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And so I just want to read off some things that I wrote down earlier today about what I used to think before I was saved. So number one, I thought that pro-choice was superior to pro-life because God, I thought that God was all about choice and this is true. God is all about choice. However, he does not want us to rally behind those that choice of choosing murder. You know, just because people go out and rape someone doesn't mean that we should legalize raping so that it's easier for the person who rapes. Murdering is wrong, period. Murdering innocent lives will always be wrong. It will never be right, especially intentionally, especially innocent blood. But I don't want to get ahead of my house myself. So um, God calls us to stand up for the cause of the oppressed. He calls us to stand up for the cause of the widows, the fatherless, the orphans. That is something that Christians must do in this life. And so that is why I found myself after I was saved and after the Holy Spirit came upon my heart, starting to understand the calls of the pro-life movement and changing from pro-choice to pro-life. And so in Proverbs 6, verse, verses 16 through, I believe, 19. Give me one moment while I flip there. It says, these six things the Lord hates, indeed seven are an abomination to him. And an abomination just means that it is something that God absolutely hates. He detests it. It is the most, it is the most wicked thing to him. So here are those seven things. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood a heart that manufactures wicked thoughts and plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, 
and he who sows discord among his brethren. So I just thought that that was really interesting. That's a scripture in Proverbs that's always stood out to me because um, I would like to think most people would want to know what is an abomination to God because those are things that he hates and he cuts off the lives of those people who um, participate in those things, you know. And going back to my first point about how you know, I thought God was all about choice, which he is. It even says in First Corinthians 13 that love does not force its own way. But the thing about abortion is people will still have that choice. Even if, you know, Roe versus Wade is overturned, like people will still have, the states will still go back and choose. And even after all of that, and there are some states that have these trigger laws like the state of Louisiana, has a trigger law already in place so that if Roe versus Wade is overturned, which is something that Christians have been praying for for decades, if it is overturned, then those things will come to fruition and immediately abortion will be outlawed in our state. And I'm so thankful for that. And, you know, people will, yes, people will have to go and travel to go get an abortion because it will make it rare, which was the whole point in the first place. You know, we've just made it convenient for people to murder the unborn. And that is so wrong, especially in the eyes of God. He absolutely hates that. And it says right there, like, that is an abomination to him. And so whenever we vote for things, whenever we even side, you know, with a woman, with pro-choice, with pro-abortion, Whenever we side with them, we're siding with the devil. We're siding with evil. We are siding with, you know, allowing that to happen. Because whenever you allow that to happen, you're tolerating it and you are participating in it. Just because you turn a blind eye to it doesn't mean that you won't also participate in the judgment that is sure to come. Over 63 million babies, more than 63 million babies have been murdered on U.S. soil and how can God who is a just and righteous God not come down and place judgment upon our nation for all of that blood that has been innocent blood that has been shed on U.S. soil he absolutely must because he is a righteous and just judge and so because we have participated in it because our tax dollars have gone towards it how you know we too would be he would be right in bringing his judgment upon us too because we've tolerated it. We've allowed it. We've sided with pro-choice. But he's given us this time of grace to repent from these things and, you know, to convince others like this is wrong. We must separate ourselves out from this. It's no longer you can sit in the middle. You, could, you couldn't sit in, from, in the middle from the beginning, but you know, the time of grace is today. Today, if you hear his voice, do not turn your hearts and harden your hearts from him like in the day of rebellion. But turn towards him and soften your hearts and hear and heed his words and it will go well with your soul. Like this is something we must listen to and take seriously. You know, it says in John ten ten that the devil comes only in order to steal to lie, to kill, and to destroy. And it is so obvious that that is what the pro-choice and pro-abortion movement does. Like, you know, our culture has done this thing where they've reappropriated words, you know, and taken, you know, the word. They've just come up with new words to kind of dumb down our nation and to make things seem like they're not what they are and to kind of soften what they truly are, which abortion is murder. Abortion is not health care. How, how in the world could we possibly say that murder is a right, that murder is health care? That is so wicked and so twisted and disgusting. That's so wrong. And it comes at the expense of 63 million plus babies every year and women. Abortion is not safe for anyone. It does kill women. You know, that's another lie that the pro-choice, pro-abortion movement and Planned Parenthood has continued to press that, 
you know, Roe versus Wade has allowed for women to have safe abortions. Abortion is not safe for anyone. It kills innocent lives. It kills babies. And it hurts the mother. There are some women who have sadly, you know, prided themselves on their abortions. And, you know, this whole movement of, you know, calling out your abortions and saying, I'm proud of the abortions I've had, you know, and I'm not judging the people who have had abortions. I pray for those people because I can't, I have no idea how much you're hurting. And I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. And, you know, God can forgive you if you'll repent and turn from your sin. But this is horrific. And it just shows how reprobate you know, our nation has become, especially the women in our nation who do pride themselves on the abortions that they've had. And that just really, it really hurts me to see how hard the heart of some mothers have become because God put within mothers here on earth, you know, this natural love, you know, of nurturing our children and I believe in Romans 1, it talks about how women will turn from those ways and eventually in the end times and they will no longer do those things which are natural to them. And I think this is one of those things like that we see, you know, the bad fruit coming from that. Like abortions hurt women. They've never been good for anyone, especially not for the baby. And definitely not for women either. It hurts them. And if you have any kind of, you know, opposition to that, I suggest you go and watch this movie called Unplanned. And I'll leave a link in the description below for it. But it's this movie about this woman who used to be on the side of pro-choice. And she actually worked for Planned Parenthood. And she was, like, climbing the... Um, career ladder or however you say that <laughs> and she was like getting high up in their ranks in Planned Parenthood and working for them and she worked at a local abortion clinic well after she you know had to kind of step up to the plate a time or two and in the surgical during like an abortion she saw the sonogram and saw like this little unborn baby turning from the medical instruments as this doctor was ripping it limb by limb and you know it's just so horrible it changed her heart and she went on you know and became a pro-life activist and you know she has this huge testimony now because of this and they've made this movie called unplanned about her life and when I watched it I'll be honest like I'm not good with blood or anything like that and I really felt you know, the things that she was talking about, like, deep in my body, and it, honestly, it made me sick to my stomach, because it was really hard for me to watch, but I just suggest, like, if you can stomach that, if you can handle that, like, I suggest going and watching that movie, because it will show you, like, there is a lot of pain, whether it's, like, a live abortion that you're having done surgically removed, or it's, like, an abortion pill Abortion hurts mothers and it hurts the babies as well and it leaves a scar that will never go away. It may heal up in some kind of way but it will never ever go away. The only way that you can be healed from that is by Jesus Christ and being forgiven by him and made new in his spirit. You know another reason why I thought that the pro-choice movement was superior to the pro-life movement before I was saved was because I thought that women were being oppressed. The pro-abortion movement and pro-choice movement prides itself on siding with the mother and not the child. And the pro-life movement says that all lives matter. Unborn lives matter too. And this is something like I first heard my dad say last week. And it really stumped me, you know, like why aren't we fighting for unborn lives more and I think you know Christians are the number one group usually who fights for unborn lives but this is something that like we really have to take seriously and step up to the plate like it's usually just the pro-choice and pro-abortion people who are 
making their calls and like putting out all this stuff on Instagram and like Christians have to stand up and fight for this voiceless group of people because there are so many people, you know, who are arguing for the other side and we have to stand up for those who don't have a voice, AKA the unborn, you know, because no child is a mistake. It doesn't matter how the child was conceived, whether it be through rape or unplanned pregnancy or premarital sex or whatever, however the child was conceived matters not because it's not the child's fault. Two wrongs never make a right. And God has a specific plan and purpose for every child's life. You know, it says in James 1 that every good gift comes from the Father of lights, comes down from the Father of lights. And every child is just that. It is a good and precious and special, unique gift from the Father of lights. And who, who are we to dispose of that gift or to turn down that gift or to just put an end to its life? Like the sixth commandment in Exodus 20 of the Ten Commandments says, Thou shall not murder. That's abortion. And just because you call it abortion and make up some new word for it doesn't mean that it isn't murder. It strictly sp- states throughout the whole Bible that murdering is wrong. It's wrong. We know in our hearts, all people know, even people who aren't Christians know in their hearts, like rape is wrong, torturing children is wrong killing is wrong there's no doubt in anyone's mind that that's not true whether you're christian or not and murdering unborn children call it abortion call it whatever you want it's wrong and we should not god's people certainly should not not ever side with pro-choice or pro-abortion or else you're a lukewarm christian he's going to spit you out of his mouth You know, I think it's really ridiculous what pro-abortion and pro-choice activists call abortion and how they fight for such rights, which there's no place in our Constitution that talks about how there's, you have a right to murder. You don't ever, period. Not in America, not ever. Like, it's just wrong. But I think it's ridiculous sometimes, all the time, the way that they talk about it and They call it reproductive rights or reproductive freedom. You're not reproducing. You're killing your child. So you're not reproducing anything. How is that a freedom? Reproductive freedom would be the freedom to be birthed. And no one has forced you. (laughs) I saw something on the internet the other day that talked about how it's forced birth. You can't force a woman to have birth. The root of the problem is premarital sex. The root of the problem is whenever we participate in sexual immorality and the majority of us, including myself, are guilty of this, you know, but Christ died on the cross for these things. He died for us, you know, knowing that we would do these things so we can turn in repentance from these things, but we must repent and go and sin no more. And so, you know, it's just so wrong to call how is murder freedom? How is how is murder reproductive freedom and reproductive rights? You don't have a right to murder. If you're calling it reproductive rights, then how is that equal murder? It never does. It never will. It's wrong. And the last reason of why I thought the pro-choice movement was superior to the pro-life movement before I was saved was because I thought that abortion was normal for most people and that it didn't matter. But the truth is, murdering will never be an okay thing. Intentionally murdering innocent anything will never be right. All of us know that in our hearts. It doesn't matter if you're Christian or not. It's never, you're never, ever, ever going to make that right. It's wrong. Everyone knows that deep in their hearts. And it should never, ever be normalized. Just because it is a baby that is living in some inside of someone doesn't mean that it doesn't have a right to life. Just because it's less developed than we are right now as human adults doesn't make it less of a human or less than a person. It still has the right to life. 
And just because it's smaller in size doesn't mean that it doesn't have a right to life. It doesn't mean that you can kill it just because it's little. It doesn't make a difference if it's less developed. I mean, how can you say that it's okay to kill it before it comes out? Is it like some magical poof while it goes down the vaginal canal that makes it, oh, now it's not right to kill it? No, it was never right to kill it. Whether it's still in the mom's womb whether or whether it's already been birthed or a fully grown adult, it will never be right. You can never justify that, ever. You know, at the end of our lives, we will all have to answer for the choices that we've made. And as Christians, we know those scriptures that say we must be doers of the word and not just mere listeners deluding ourselves. Don't call yourselves a Christian, but then go and side with this pro-choice movement. You're not being a doer of the word. You're not fighting for the things that Christ would have fought for. You know, children were so important to him. And even his disciples sometimes would, you know, try to hinder them. And that's so wrong. Like Jesus says, let them come to me. Do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And, you know, he tells us to humble ourselves as little children. He tells us and compares you know, the greatest in the kingdom will be like this little child. So who are we to kill children and to side with adults who pride all of their arguments on self selfish reasons and false justice? And they're, it's such a victimhood. And they're not even the victim. It's so wrong. And it's just really twisted. And the last thing I want to talk about is the history of Planned Parenthood. The founder of Planned Parenthood was Margaret Sanger, who was someone who sided with the Ku Klux Klan, someone who carried forth eugenics projects, such as the Negro Project. And she herself said this quote here, We do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population, and the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. You know, I'm reading that straight from like a USA Today article. It's so sad, but abortion affects African Americans much more than it affects white people. <laughs> it's just ridiculous that like if people want to help stop systemic racism, this is the place to look. Look no further than Margaret Sanger, the history of Planned Parenthood, and the reason why all of these abortion clinics are in lower income neighborhoods and how they affect the Amer African American population in our nation. There are stats that say in 2016, of all abortions that were tracked, African Americans made up about 38% even though they, African Americans only make up 13% of the female population. They account for 38% of all abortions that were had that year. And also, in that same article, it said that more African American babies were aborted than born alive each year in New York, as well as the abortion rate for black women is almost five times that for white women. And that to me is so sad. As a minority that is already greatly oppressed in our nation and has been segregated and looked down upon and looked down in contempt for so many decades or centuries in our nation, like this is something we can all do our homework on and look in the history of like this hurts not just women, but it hurts African American women who are already subjected to so much oppression. There would be so many more African Americans in our nation if it weren't for the systemic racism that Margaret Sanger started all those years ago. In conclusion, all lives matter. Life is sacred because we were all made in the image of God. And that tiny unborn child that is growing in the womb of a mother is a human who has a right to life. And just because it is small and growing inside of another person and is dependent on another person and is not quite fully developed does not mean that we have the right to murder it. Also, abortion is not health care. 
and it's not safe for anyone. It hurts the mother and it also hurts the baby. And it leaves scars that only Jesus can heal us from. Also, it is not your body. Therefore, it's not your choice. It is, in fact, the body of an entirely other human being who has the right to life. It is a human with rights, regardless of its development. You know, you are either for him or you're against him. That's what the scriptures say. And Christians need to make a choice. Jesus already drew the line in the sand and he wants to see, you know, which side are you on? Are you for him or are you against him? Are you for murder? Because people always have the choice to murder. And, you know, siding with pro-life doesn't mean that you're against the choice. It just means that you support the side of God. You see it from God's perspective and you know that children are are so incredibly special to God. And every light every life has purpose and has the right to be born. No one has forced anyone to give birth. But God, every single child was created with love and knit in the womb of the mother by God himself because he put them here for a purpose and for such a time as this. And who are we? to end that life or to go against that. To close, I'd like to read from Psalm 139. And this is verses 13 through 18. It says, For you did form me in my inward parts. You did knit me together in my mother's womb. I will confess and praise you. For you are fearful and wonderful and for the awful wonder of my birth. Wonderful are your works and that my inner self knows right well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and intricately and curiously wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days were written before ever they took shape, when as yet there was none of them. How precious and weighty also are your thoughts toward me, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I could count them, they would be more than the number of sand. When I awoke, I would still be with you. Thank you so much for watching today. And I pray that if anyone has any questions or, you know, wants to reach out to me, feel free to reach out to me or email me. And I have all of my information below in the description. So feel free to reach out to me and, um, you know, pray that the Lord would give you clarity if you're sitting on the fence about these things, you know, and um, just thank you so much for watching. And I just I pray a special blessing over every single one of my listeners. And I hope you have a good rest of your week. God bless you all.